dear students of class uh, ninth this is the third video and uh, in this video we'll discuss about physical feature of india before going to the new topic uh, let us discuss one very important question that you may be getting from the topic what we discussed in the previous video the great northern plain of india so you may get to one very important question mention the importance of the northern plain first point what we can mention here that great northern plain of india is made up of fertile alluvial soil it is a flat surface and the plain of india is of great economic and social significance second point the fertile soil and assured water resources have made this plain a rich agricultural land of our country next point the plain has a good network of roads and railways which uh, has led to the large scale industrialization of this region and generally in this area we are getting agro based industries another point as the region has sufficient employment opportunities so this uh, is a densely populated part of our country and more than 50% of the total population of india lives here another point the northern plain is the site where ancient civilizations of mohan jodaro and harappa developed now we will discuss about the new topic that is the peninsular plateau of our country so with regard to the peninsular plateau of our country this uh, major geographic unit lies to the south of the great northern plain of india so with regard to the peninsular plateau it is a table land which is composed of old crystalline igneous and metamorphic rocks and from this topic uh, you may be getting the question mention the characteristic of peninsular plateau of our country so if you are getting the question mention the characteristic of peninsular plateau the important points what you can add here is that this is a table land composed of old crystalline igneous and metamorphic rock second point it was formed due to the breaking and drifting of the gondwana land third point it is the oldest landmass of our country another point this plateau has broad and shallow valleys and rounded hill another point this plateau consists of two broad divisions namely the central highland and the deccan plateau so with regard to the narmada river which is a west flowing peninsular river it is dividing the peninsular plateau into two parts the part of the plateau which lies to the north of the narmada river that is known as central highland and the part of the plateau which lies to the south of the narmada river that is known as deccan plateau first let us discuss about the central highland so with regard to the central highland this uh, is the part of the peninsular plateau which lies to the north of the narmada river which cover a major area of malwa plateau it is bounded by the aravalli range in the west and the vindhya in the south the further westward extension gradually merges with the sandy and rocky desert of rajasthan the rivers which are draining this region are the chambal the sind the vetwa and the kain the central highland is wider in the west but narrower in the east the eastward extension of this plateau are locally known as the bundelkhand the waghelkhand and the chhota nagpur plateau marks the further eastward extension of the central highland and the chhota nagpur plateau is drained by the important river that is the damodar river 
after that we will discuss about the duncan plateau so with regard to the duncan plateau this plateau is a triangular land mass and it lies to the south of the narmada river it is having its broad base in the north and apex toward the south so the base broad base in the north has been formed by satpura range while the mahadev the kamur hills and meghal range form its eastward extension the deccan plateau is higher in the west and slopes gently eastwards the extension of this plateau is also visible in the northeast locally known as the meghalaya karvi anglung plateau and it is separated by a fault from chota nagpur plateau after that we will discuss about the ghats so with regard to the ghats ghats uh, can be categorized into two parts two types western ghats and the eastern ghats so these western ghats and eastern ghats mark the western and eastern edges of the deccan plateau respectively western ghats lie parallel to the western coast of india and they are continuous they are prominent they are less broken and they can be crossed through passes only so now let us discuss about the differences in between the western ghats and eastern ghats and before going to that just i told that the western ghats are prominent but with regard to the eastern ghats they are broken by the east flowing peninsular rivers at several places western ghats or if you want you can uh, see the map here so with regard to the western ghat this is the western ghat and in this side we are getting eastern ghat so what we will notice western ghats are higher than the eastern ghats the average elevation or height of the western ghat is ranging in between 900 to 1600 meter but with regard to the eastern ghat average height is about only 600 meters above the mean sea level eastern ghats stretch from maha nadi valley to the nilgiris in the south and with regard to the eastern ghats they are discontinuous and irregular and dissected by rivers east flowing peninsular rivers after that with regard to the western ghats the height of the western ghats progressively increases from north to south the highest peak what we are getting in the western ghat that is anai mudi and with regard to the anai mudi it is having the height of about 2695 meters above the mean sea level the another important peak in the western ghat that is doda beta it is having the height of about 2637 meters but uh, with regard to the highest peak in the eastern ghat that is mahendragiri it is having the height of about 1501 meters above the mean sea level after that we will discuss about the north western part of the deccan plateau so with regard to the northwestern part of the deccan plateau that is known as deccan trap area this is uh, one distinct feature of the peninsular plateau so this is uh, of volcanic origin hence here we are getting igneous rock but now the due to the weathering due to the weathering of the northwestern part of the deccan plateau now we are getting black soil in this area and uh, with regard to the black soil it is uh, ideal for cultivation of cotton after that uh, the new topic the indian desert we will discuss in the next video okay thank you